The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at the freaks come out. The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at the freak. Hey, <laughs> what's cracking? <laughs> I forgot to press the button. Uh, yo, what's going on, everybody? What's cracking, everybody in the Busy Fish chat? Let's see what we got. Some of you guys came early, and I'm sure it's not not for me. You guys are lucky it's not April, <laughs> and there's no such thing as June Fools. It is. This is. I. I knew you were gonna. Uh, ah. Casual Aquatics, thanks for coming in. Furloughs Aquatics, thanks for coming in. I appreciate the video, Furloughs, too, man, that you did. It was awesome, bro. Uh, Monster Fish Gal, thank you for coming through. Elizabeth Fish, Fish, uh, Elizabeth Florida Fish Rescue, thank you for coming through. Melly Mel, what's cracking? Thank you for coming through. Daniel Faulkner, thank you for coming through. New to the channel, new cyclic keeper for about six weeks. Now, thanks for the info. Keep it locked. Keep it locked, Daniel Faulkner. Listen, sickly keeper myself, man, first and foremost. So uh, we'll get you to where you need to be straight up. Thank you for coming through. <clears throat> also got a guy here that's extra special um, that is going to uh, they can answer all your sickly questions too. Uh, Brenda Schroeder. Thank you for coming through. Look at this. Kevin Burkett. Thank you for coming through. <laughs> Let the party start now. Aqua Funk, let's get it. Okay, who ripped one in the chat? I'm up. Monica Lynn, my moderator extraordinaire. Thank you for coming through. As always, Skull Aquatics. You already know what it is. Texas Fish Room, Aquarium Insider. Muppet, what's cracking? Danny Weshy, I was just in your store today. I picked up, I picked up some blood worms, actually. Ooh, shoot, I left them out. I gotta get them in the freezer. Um Jay Watts, mining up in here, Pomp Pompeii Ranch. Thank you for coming through. Velez, Dobek, what's cracking? Shannon, thank you. Michael, Sheila, thank you for coming through. Dreamweaver, and I'm here. I'm headed down. Funk says, please hit the like button if you don't mind, please, and thank you. Lonnie, a.k.a. Looney, was cracking. Zen Ginger, Mandy, Pandy, Randy, you already know what it is, was cracking. Thank you for coming through. And we are now at the bottom. What's cracking, everybody? Listen, it's Monday, case of the Mondays. If you're back at work, this is your time to wind down, baby. It's, you know, it's 9 in the p.m. over here in St. Louis in Central Time. Wherever it is, wherever you are, get your libations out. It's going to be one of those nights tonight. I got the man himself here. I told him if I was on yours, you had to be on mine. Simple as that. It's facts. <laughs> and if you don't know who I'm talking about, you must be living under a rock or up under a pleco or something, man. You got to know who John Hudson is from KG Tropicals. And always remember, get all your Fritz um, water conditioner, get all of your extreme food, and everything your fish needs, and especially your betas from keepfishkeeping.com and if you use the link in the description i'll let your boy that'll let you know that the biz sent you what up mark thank you for coming through before i let him in for those that you that don't know this is the guy all right this is this is my guy i i really appreciate him man he's he's fun um if you don't know him personally man he's a good guy uh cool cat to cat to uh to uh, chill out with and um he, he's, he's, he's funny, man. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be that kind of chat. So let's bring him in without further ado. It's uh, it's John Hudson, the guy that uh, he likes the super chats, but he doesn't act like it. <laughs> you know what? We just got another super chat in. I don't know why you guys do this, but um, we really appreciate it. Not that it's needed, but we really appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. What was I going to say? It was on the tip of my tongue. There it is cichlids <laughs> here he is john hudson from kg tropicals what's cra yeah what's cracking y'all oh my god hey Dude. i didn't have the white towel 
but uh, I paid attention to what you were wearing at uh, Orlando and decided to put my outfit together, try to match you, you know, so I can blend in here today. You sly, slick bug. <laughs> hey, I bought these glasses just for this stream. I'm not kidding. The AV, did you? <laughs> I was like, where'd you get my glasses from? <laughs> I ran to Walmart today. I said I got to get me some of those. I think they do. I think they are. They look all right on me. I don't know. Those are awesome. They 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 really they. I knew you would disrespect me already. Already <laughs> disrespect you. This is in tribute to you. This is okay. like. Okay. This, I brought out the Steve outfit today. I love it. I love it. The Steve hat anyway. <laughs> I even did the towel. That was a last second addition here, putting the towel over my shoulder. I, it's perfect. It's but perfect. My Look. fishy biz towel is up in my laundry. I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I washed it. I had to wash it. How you been, man? Good. I, I, I don't know if I have uh, recovered yet from the weekend. It's still uh, <laughs> still catching up. Um, I've been, we had, it was like 95 degrees here today. So it was, uh, it was hot, but you know, <laughs> getting caught up. I feel pretty good. That's what's up. It, it's, it gets, only, it's only been a week and a half. <laughs> hey, look, I was telling everybody that Florida heat is nothing to play with. We literally walked out of an air conditioned um, convention center. And as soon as you step foot out into Florida heat, it smacks you in the mouth. <laughs> That's how it was here today. I mean, it, it, it was nasty here today. Now I like it hot, so I, that's fine by me. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty ridiculous today. Oh my god, it's not even funny. How was your day today, man? It was good. Yeah, good. I mean, uh, right. uh, Mondays are always a little crazy for us, catching up over okay. the weekend and all that, all the orders coming in over the weekend. But uh, but yeah, it was it was a good day. Got my workout yeah. in. Got a, you know out in that summer heat. It's, it's a good day. Okay. Very good. Very good. I like to hear it. I like to hear it. So we've done, you know, Aquashella videos. Like we said, we knew they were going to be popping off. We, you've, you've done a, uh, a, a live actually at the Shella, and then you've done one afterwards talking about the Shella. I just want to touch on a little bit again on uh, what, what was like maybe your favorite thing that you did and maybe one of the least things that, that you didn't like. Well, I mean, I, I have to say the same thing I said in my stream. The the favorite thing was Lisa and I doing the talk. Uh, that was that was the realization of a of a long time dream for me, and I, I've still never really been able to figure out how to explain why that was a dream for me. It just it just was, and to be up there, I felt completely comfortable up there, even though I couldn't see the people in the audience, which kind of bothered me. Yeah, uh, but I. I I, I don't think you were there. I don't think you uh, were there for my talk. I don't know. I, it was kind of. I was sitting in the front row on the side as if I was really your security. I had actually took one of the other seats from, I think, a, I think it was a worker seat. I was next to the speaker the whole time. Oh, OK. Well, that's why I didn't see you. Yeah, I was a little. <laughs> it hurt my feelings a little bit. I didn't think you were there, but. The whole time. As a fact, <laughs> I have I have a video of you up there and when you brought when you brought your wife up. So, yeah, that, that has to be the highlight. I mean, and you know, everybody has said it. The people were amazing. Not, not only the other YouTubers that were there, but also the, um, the fans that were there, you know, I mean, it, it always amazes me the people that will come up to us. I'm sure you had some say it to you too, that would say, you know, we came here specifically to see you guys. I mean, and that's, Man, it's still, I can't believe I live in that world. I mean, it's its an amazing thing. So, yeah, the people, I mean, it, it literally could have been an empty room it just with the people in there, and I would have had just as much fun. Yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely nice. Um, definitely a different switch than Chicago. For those that don't know, I actually met John, uh, not the last year because of pandemic, but the year before that in Chicago, and uh, almost pretty much hit it off like instantly from there it was in and, and, and that's where it started at but um you definitely saw a little bit more fresh water in chicago i did not know orlando was so salt water heavy um so it was definitely big big salty there so 
Yeah. And I mean, you know, the, the biggest thing for me, like the biggest negative of the whole event uh, had nothing to do with the show itself and had everything to do with me. I, I There's so many things that I have seen in videos because I, I didn't film anything there except for our talk. Um, but I've watched other people's videos. There's so many things I didn't even see. Like, I'm like, I didn't even see that, that mm -hmm. angel tank, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things I didn't see and that's, I'm guilty of that every single show I go to. I get kind of in the zone of, you know, I'm here to meet the people. I'm here to do all of that. And I kind of lose sight of all the cool things that are there to see. One of these times when I go to one of these shows, I'm going to have to grab my security and, and go for a, a tour. And <laughs> no, but just take a walk through it and, and actually see everything. That's, that's my biggest regret every time. Is there's so many cool yeah. things there that I didn't even see. Well, you know, and you were getting stopped left and right as as you, you're probably used to, you know, take pictures and do interviews and be on my live and you're my favorite and stuff like that. Um, this was the first time I actually had a like hardcore fan. And uh, I, I like it was it was it was crazy because I didn't think she was talking to me because the first lady that came up to me really wasn't talking about me. She was talking about Ryan. <laughs> for oh. <a> <laughs> She was like, oh, my God, are you the guy that goes around Orlando? <laughs> oh, and just I was like, no, that'd be the other big black guy. That's the other He's six foot seven guy. <laughs> it's only two of us. Yeah. I, I'm the biz. I don't I don't know who the hell that is. Oh, oh, well, here's a towel. Don't worry about it. Maybe you can look it up. Uh, Google me. <laughs> that happens all day long with me and Jason. It, it's and. I mean, okay, we're both bald white guys. We're about the same height. I think he might be a little shorter than me. He's actually much more better built than I am. But other than being bald white guys that are the exact same age, I don't know that there's all that many uh, similarities. But there would be people that would carry on a full-blown conversation with me thinking that I was him. And it's funny. And I would be like, you know, I'm really enjoying this conversation. But I think you feel like you're talking to that guy. And I would... I would point to Jason and they'd get embarrassed. I'm like, hey, it happens all the time. So yeah, you're not the only one getting confused with other people. Yeah, I, you know what? I thought I had one and then then mine came through. Came <laughs> right when I was, look, I was walking and she was about like knee high to a June bug and she looked up and she said, you're, you're him, you're the guy. And this time I was like, are you sure? Because <laughs> she's like, what's cracking? And I was like, there you go. Oh, You're it is you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's God, I watched you and and uh, can I just take a picture with you? I was like, well, hell yeah. This is what I'm here photo pops. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as human beings, we are all we all want to be told we're doing a good job. You know, whether you work you know, you're working in the school system, the the higher ups in the school system come down and tell you you're doing a good job. I I've been self-employed for 20 years. So, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have a boss that's going to come up and say that to me, but everybody likes those attaboys. When those attaboys come directly from the people that are consuming your product, that's, there's no better feeling than that. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have, or it, it, it means nothing. It's the most incredible thing when that happens. And let me tell you something, when it's a child, that's next level right there. And Lisa had that over and over and over again. I think I had a couple young people, but with Lisa, it was the young girls, which I was just so amazed by. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because everybody loves Lisa, but the, the amount of young girls that were coming up there, there was a couple of them that were like shaking to meet her. And then they mm -hmm. were like, oh yeah, you can be in the picture too, you know, talking to me. But that was the most amazing <laughs> thing to see, the, the young yeah. people, because that's... You try to reach the kids. I know that's kind of your thing. That's really what you want to do. We don't gear our content directly to kids, but if we get attention from the kids, that's a really big deal for us. So, absolutely. That's what's up, man. And it, it, it's 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 just a great feeling. I finally felt it. Just a little piece of it. It makes you just want to just go that that don't go that much harder. So I can see how you could be doing it for so long. Not not to mention your love of the hobby. And then the people that that show you the love, man, just it's just all around 
hits on every on everything that you that you want emotionally, mentally, and uh, you know, it works. It just works. Well, and and you know, it's not all about people telling us how much they love us. It's also people expressing how much they love this hobby. I mean, I, I've had so many people come up to me uh, in person and tell me stories that they wouldn't feel comfortable sharing in the comment section of a video or whatever. And that's, yeah. it's just incredible to hear stories of people persevering through depression or, or disease or, or, you know, and, and this hobby is what helped them through that deaths in the family, whatever you don't get any better than that. I mean, that's, that's big time right there. I, and again, it doesn't matter where you're from, how many subscribers you have, what the numbers are that never gets old ever. So that's why I'll that's always real. go to those events. That's real. That's real. I mean, it, it's priceless. It's priceless. If you guys haven't been, you guys have definitely got to go. If you have been, then you know what we're talking about. And, uh, it's just an awesome time. Awesome time. Now, I wanted to ask you, now, I saw you, your video on the guy that you were going to replace me with uh, when you went to his shop. Um, and, uh, <laughs> it would have been a great pickup. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I am me, but. <laughs> I had a fuzzy on my head. I wasn't being weird. I had a fuzzy from my hat on my head. I was trying to. Okay. But I was going to ask you um, about uh, did you did you ever from there get to go to we had talked about you doing a, maybe a fish collecting trip? No, um, you know what? The, I went down there. I recorded a few videos. You're talking about my buddy Rama. He's not replacing you. I've I've known Rama a whole lot longer than I've known you. So if anything, you're replacing him. But uh, but no. <laughs> he's he's a busy guy he's running a shop and and he's doing all of that he is a he is very much a hands-on guy when it comes to his shop he does have employees and stuff like that but he's he's running non-stop and uh it's one of those things where he's going to reach out to me when he's going out on a trip um locally here and sure. uh you know i'm sure i can free up my schedule and go out there and, and hang out with him i'm i'm looking forward to that I don't know when he's going to do it. I, I think it might be a little, little too hot right now to really do well at it. So it might be something that doesn't happen until later in the summer. I, I'm not sure, but okay. uh, but he's definitely right. got me on the list of people to call up, and I will absolutely bring a camera. That's really all I'll do is is film everything. I'm I'm not getting in there collecting the fish. I'll just film him doing it. <laughs> uh, when's the last time you actually went fishing? Like threw a whole pole in the water. Oh man, probably 20 years ago. Oh wow. I mean, I've gone and 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 the kids have fished and I which meant that I was basically the one constantly putting bait on lures and you know, so I never got to cast a line myself, but that's that's fine by me. I'd rather watch them uh fish than than me do it anyway, but uh but yeah, the last time I actually had a pole in my hand fishing myself was with my brother uh fishing for striper and that had to have been 20 years ago it was a long did you, time ago. did you catch oh yeah yeah lots i mean we, right on the potomac river we've got all kinds of spots that uh the stripers are are practically jumping in the boat it's the easiest thing in the world uh and got some got some heavy hitters in there too uh, this was before everybody had a camera in their pocket so i didn't get any pictures of them or anything like that but uh you know it's I haven't done a whole lot of things like that, just my brother and I. So that's something that uh, I'll always remember for sure. Sounds good. Now, I always ask everybody on here, um, your recent rookie mistake that you've made. Now, I, I know the Arapaima debacle, but anything more recent than that? Arapaima debacle? Mm. Arowana. I'm sorry. I got Arapaima on the brain because... Well, that probably would be the, the last like, I mean, I make mistakes almost every day. Let's let's be real. But as far as fish mistakes, um, other than multiple times overflowing tanks, uh, okay. <laughs> but right. we've I got all it. of our tanks in strategic areas where if they leave, if they water gets on the floor, it doesn't really hurt anything. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I, the the arowana, the leaving a little gap 
to allow the arowana to jump out is probably the certainly the most heartbreaker uh yeah. mistake i've made in, in a while would that be your biggest tank disaster you think or something different no you? no i had uh shoot this must have been like 2016 maybe 15 I, who knows um i had a filter fail and it was one of those scenarios where uh life was crazy i was working two full-time jobs it was just kind of nuts and I hadn't seen the tank since like early the day before. And it probably failed like early because basically the, the entire tank except for one fish was wiped out. Um, it, was, it was a situation where it was a heavily stocked tank. The fish were all in there kind of temporarily and, uh, and the filter was just dead. It just died. And, uh, and that was, uh, yeah, that was a killer. That was, that was brutal. Probably the, the worst thing I've ever had as far as a fish keeper goes. Jeez. That's got to suck. <laughs> we had fish in there that were from the very first spawning of peacock cichlids we ever had. Oh, wow. We raised them up and they were full grown, glorious, and they they perished with all the others. It was it was brutal. Thanks for bringing that up. But, you know, it's nice to reminisce about all the time. I, you know. You know, I like to take you down, you know, memory lane every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, what about, um, what would you say to your 25 year old self? Ooh, wow, man. I wish I could have prepared for these. Dag on it. Um, be patient. I would have said be patient. Now, my life at 25 was very different than it is now. Uh, it, it, you know, in a in my first marriage, and you know, it was very different than it is now. But um, in those years, the the 20s and and early 30s, I was uh, very much an impulsive person. I had an idea, and boom, I would just run with it. And uh, sometimes it worked out really well. Others, not so much. So I would probably say, slow down, young fella, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and take it slow, be patient, and um, don't ever uh, get complacent. Because <laughs> then you get fat and uh, you struggle at 46 years old to try to get back down to normal weight. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, now, you guys, you and, uh, you and Lisa did your your couples talk at the show and now you recorded it. Is, is that something that people who weren't there are going to be able to see? Did you, is it anything that they could pull up? Cause you guys did some, had some great um, tips and points in there for, especially for, for people who spouse might not be into it, how to get them into it. And then the way you guys go back and forth is awesome too. Well, we do. Uh, we, we filmed the whole thing. Thank you to uh, fish room fever. He helped us out manning the camera on that one, uh, which it might seem like it's not that big of a deal. You're just the camera was on a tripod the whole time. But Canon cameras, I'm a Canon guy. They shut off or they stopped recording after 30 minutes. So he had to restart it for us. Uh, that was basically all I asked him to do was, you know, when it gets to 30 minutes, click record again. Um, so he, he was a big help for that. It's available. It's not the best quality, but it is available on our channel to channel members. Okay. Um, we we got the green light from Aquashella to release it to the public if we wanted to. Uh, so it's not an issue there, but it's more if, if we're ever asked to do that again, like if they want her and I to do a talk again, if we wanted to do that particular talk again, if it's released to the public, you know, we wouldn't really be able to do that again. There wouldn't be any reason for anybody to come out and see it. So we decided to just make it available to channel members. And uh, so they're they're all enjoying it. But uh, I don't know that we'll release it to the public, though. It's And it's not because it's bad. It's just because we want to save it in case we want to do another one. Uh, what was your first tank size ever? 29 gallon with an arowana. And you should remember, I said that on stage at Aquashella. Yes, I uh, set up the perfect arowana tank. 
uh, a 29 gallon. <laughs> hey, it was 1993. There wasn't anybody <laughs> that would say, look, dip, you know what? You need, you need an eight foot at least tank for that. Nobody had, they were just, they, you walk in, you say, I want that fish. They wouldn't ask any questions. They just sell it to you. They wouldn't care if you're putting it in a five gallon tank. So uh, I th was an idiot. I had no idea and uh, thought I was doing the right thing. And I put them in a 29 gallon tank. <laughs> the people had to hear it. <laughs> yeah. And you knew it. You're trying, you're intentionally trying to embarrass me. I get it. No, you know what? I have always been a firm believer in uh, learn from my mistakes. Uh, I've never, ever like withheld mistakes from people. The, the incident that we were talking about earlier about the my tank that crashed, I did a video about that. I did a video about my arowana jumping out of this tank. I've never been somebody to hold back when mistakes are made. And so I'm glad to tell that story because, you know, there's a lot of people right now that are probably just like me back then thinking, I've got mine in a 29 and he's perfectly happy. Maybe if they hear me talk about it, then they'll uh, reconsider next time. they. Well, they get it's always tank. good to, to show your human side that even the big wigs make, make mistakes and everybody does. And that's always a good thing because, you know, people until they see you, they, you know, sometimes they just feel like you're not even, you know, I've heard um, Lisa talk about this, it. like, like we are human, we have feelings and everything else. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting in my garage right now. I haven't shaved in two days. I've got my chihuahuas sleeping next to me. I'm looking up at cobwebs. I mean, look, I, I'm just a guy that keeps aquariums and I make videos about them. I mean, it's there's no big wig sitting in this garage. I mean, but I do feel a, a responsibility to, you know, there are people that listen to us. So I, I want to make sure people know, you know, if, hey, if we make a mistake, we're going to tell you. So. I feel kind of obligated to do that. For sure. Um, can you see the chat, the people in the chat? I can. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Was there something okay. I could have seen specific, specifically? Nope. I just want you to say hi to the people in the chat, and I'll be right back. Oh, somebody must have had to take a pee pee break. We're all here. No, I had to get something to stop. <laughs> so. I see uh, my lovely wife is in there. Let me see. I, I'm going to wear it Steve style because uh, this is weird being on somebody else's stream and being in charge of uh, of needing to to keep the show going. I, I'm yeah, not, just do it. I'm not used to that. Uh, <laughs> Aquafunk thinks that I would be look good in a big wig. Uh, I don't know what that's all about, but uh, that guy surprised me in uh, in in Florida. How subdued he is i was expecting him to be like bouncing off the walls and rolling around and and he was just kind of like there <laughs> but that was cool that was fun and i would not look good in a wig as a matter of fact aquafunk i have done this if you're talking see i'm, I'm thinking you're talking about me i've worn i have worn a wig in a live stream before you got to go back to 2009 2019 Halloween. KG Tropical, so you sail betas but keep personally big cichlids. Why didn't you deal in big fish also if you could keep one fish that I haven't, which, what? I don't understand what that means. Um, we don't sell big cichlids because they are almost impossible to ship. Um, betas are much easier to ship. Plus, I am married to a woman who uh, has a real beta problem. She is completely and totally obsessed with those fish. And it was her idea. She wanted to sell fish. I thought we were out of the fish selling game, but she uh, she wanted to do it. And so what mama wants, mama gets. I see science in the chat and Mr. 3000 is in here. Finally, I was wondering when I was going to see that name. <laughs> I'm not a circus. <laughs> oh, circus money for everyone's amusement. Uh, hey, Funk, you handled yourself like a gentleman. The only problem, you weren't there enough. That was the problem with uh, with Aquafunk. He wasn't. Uh... John, that's because he drinks before he does a video. Oh, that's why he needed we were... a PP break. 
<laughs> the, first of all, that wasn't a pee pee break. <laughs> that is my say hi to the chat break. Yeah, that's really awkward when it's not your stream. Yeah, maybe don't do that to me again. Hey, man, you can handle it. Not <laughs> <laughs> like over a thousand streams. <laughs> I do my best. Well, people, listen, my moderators will um, gauge the questions that you have for John, and we'll do that after. Because John is now um, has come into to a, uh, a part of the stream that I'm sure everybody wanted to be a part of here and uh, at Fishy Biz Aquatics. It is that part of the stream that is that is uh, highly loved here on the channel and uh can somebody in the chat let john know what he's what he's in for please that's why i got the glasses on because it's <laughs> hide the tears and the bloodshot eyes <laughs> someone please let him know what he's in for anybody somebody everybody once i see it it's gonna it's gonna go down you already know what it is what's the name of it i'm 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 waiting Monica Lynn got it. Actually, it's it's the it's oh the, no, Danny. Maybe, uh, I don't know with the glasses. <laughs> I can't see. Well, I tell you what, we'll jump right into it. And uh, John, KG Tropicals and Fishy Biz Aquatics is going to be a crazy one. And there's a lot of live streams on, but this is going to be your favorite one. And I'm not going to play with them. Welcome to the hot spot. That's right, John. You have made it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it goes down, baby, in the hot spot. Making me nervous now. Very simple, John. Very, very simple. These questions are only about you and only ones that you can answer. Um, that's That's all that they are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, may or may not have anything to do with fish. We know you're a fish guy, but uh, I know you on a different level. And uh, I know people. That's why I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I know people want to know a little bit more about John Hudson, the man. Let's do it. The man behind the tanks. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm a little nervous, but I'm right. ready. Let's go. Don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. The first. Magic questions are your faves. Only your faves and your faves alone. All right. So your favorite, your favorite. What is your favorite filtration? Canisters. Any particular brand? I like the Fluvals. Come on. Of course I do. You know what? I just told you a nightmare story about a filter conking out and killing all of my fish that was a fluval but it's i mean things happen i'm not going to be mad at fluval over that you know what i mean um sure. the fluvals i've got four or five of them running right now um they've always treated me good except for that one time um they're easy I, I, and you know what you hook them up the fx series you hook them up you let them run and you can literally just forget about them and I, i'm not somebody that's paid by fluval Fluval won't even let me carry their products because I'm not big time enough for them. Uh, so I'm saying this just because it's what I believe. Fluval canister filters sets the bar. Yeah, they're the ones. There it is. Fluval. What is your favorite tank size? You have a lot of them and you've had started off with 29. So what's your favorite? I'm going to go with my 240s. I've got two of them that are identical in size. Uh, they are 24 deep, 30 inches tall, and uh, 72 inches wide. Um, to me, it is, you've got so many options with that tank. You could do Oscars. You could do Africans. Like I've got in both of my 240s, I've got the one is a peacock cap tank. The other is all uh, in bonus. You've got so many options with it. It's tall. So if you wanted to do a really nice, like, angel tank or, or discus tank or something like that don't get any ideas lisa we could definitely do that um and it's big without being stupid like this right here would be stupid in somebody's living room 
I love it out here. I would love it in a rec room in the basement or something like that. But in a living room, I mean, it would have to be a massive living room. So kind of a stupid tank for being in, you know, a living space like that. But the 240, perfect for a space like that. So yeah, 240 all day long. There it is. 240 would be great for discus. I knew that was coming. <laughs> you know, it's what she wanted ever since you guys got married. Yeah. She's got two of them already. I don't know what her problem is. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite substrate to use? Oh, man. I mean, just listen, this is going to sound so amateurish, but I like just regular, like natural colored gravel. I, I mean, it's it looks good. It is super easy to maintain. Uh, it looks you know, close to natural, maybe not as natural as sand, but it looks really good, goes with everything, makes the fish pop. Uh, I've got it in two tanks sitting right over there that, I mean, you can kind of see, Yeah, you can't see the substrate in it, but um, natural, easy to maintain, hides the poop well, that's going to be my favorite. I, every, all of my answers are going to be whatever's easiest. That's going to be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. And, and it's always good to know, especially for uh, beginners. Um, what would what would be your beginner? And this is just off the cuff. What would be your favorite beginner tank for somebody just starting out? Oh, well, not your favorite, but what would you say to a beginner? You know, I used to say 29 gallon, all, all jokes aside. I mean, the, um, 29s are, are, are really good because you've got a lot of options and stuff like that. I've kind of shifted to 55. I, I feel like back when I started keeping fish, a 55 meant you were like, you were legit. Like you were a big timer if you had a 55. Now, you know, there's a lot of people starting with 55s. I think that you're a lot less likely to have major water problems and shifts in water parameters and stuff like that with that much water. Uh, not outrageously expensive. I mean, it's not cheap either, but you're not going to go broke setting up a 55. You can pick them up all day long on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever. They're just so easy, and you have so many options. And if you make that mistake, not with an marijuana, but if you make that mistake with like an Oscar, you're doing at least better having them in a 55 than a 20 or a 29 or something like that. Or an marijuana in a 29. Jeez, who was that guy? Right. What kind of an idiot does that? I mean, <laughs> moron. <laughs> I kind of like the glasses on. I'm putting them back on. You can't see. Had a boy. Hey, I got to rub off on you somehow. <laughs> I'm gonna look up like Ronnie Millsap style while I'm talking. <laughs> oh, what is your favorite place to buy fish? I know, but tell everybody. Do you know? I think so. The one that you do all your B-roll in, and you have a great affinity for. It, have 500 tanks and. I do love that store an awful lot. Yeah, you do. And I would have to say it would be that. And you know what? The, the reason for it is uh, we never have problems with the fish that we get from there. Uh, we're talking it's about House, a plus. House of Tropicals in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so many options. They have everything. They have fish that you never see at other places. And when you have 500 tanks, you can kind of get away with that. Um, fish are healthy. Fish are good. The, the staff is amazing. And I have no reason to say this other than that's what I believe. That's it's been my favorite fish store since the first time I went in there. I love that place. And all the time, you know, so good, good, good. I'm happy to be uh, there. You ever come over to Virginia? Look, I'll look. I, I'm, I'll do it. Just give me the invite. <laughs> I mean, all due respect. Uh, going to Baltimore is a place that it would be good to have security at. I'm just saying. But yeah, I got an uncle in Maryland. I uh, went up there. Uh, me and 3000 went up there and uh, painted the town red out there. It was, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Where that store is, it's not, it's not a That's bad not, I, mean, not, I, I used to go to like downtown city of Baltimore for work. And I, w I went through like right after all of those riots happened. And uh, man, it was brutal up there. The place was burnt to the ground. But uh, it's, it's, the, the fish store is not in that area. It's kind of on the outskirts. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask this question. I know you don't like it, 
but I got to ask it because you've had several fish. You've been in fish keeping for several years. Right now it's bikers. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I mean, okay. everybody, everybody watching knew you were about to ask, what is my favorite you, fish? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, listen. Very good proponent of Oscar. Go ahead. This tank behind me is, it's the one right now. I mean, it, it's, I, I don't. Can we get a, let's see. Let's see what, we, that, it's monstrous. Look at that. It's beautiful. Get a little closer here, at least. Uh, okay. Everything's backwards. But, wow, I look weird this way. So, <laughs> this tank is for me. It's what I'm happy with. It's what I like. I don't care if people on YouTube don't like it. I don't care if it's popular or whatever. It's just what is going to make me happy and what's going to make me smile. That's what I'm going to put in this tank. And uh, and the, you're looking at all the fish right now that that make me the happiest. Uh, arowanas have always been my favorites. I think they they always will be. But let me tell you something. This little guy here and his brother that he's not brothers with, they're, they're actually both over there laying on top of each other now uh they are absolutely stealing my heart those fish are incredible uh, i absolutely love them and i have never been more entertained watching fish eat than them I, I i'm considering making a whole video just feeding bikers i call them bikers you call them whatever you want to call them it's so fun to watch them eat because they don't just aggressively go after the food and gulp it like these big dogs in here do. They kind of push the food around and they kind of stare at it for a little bit and hover around it. And then it, it's just so entertaining. So they are, uh, they are quickly becoming my favorites and it's possible they might actually take that, uh, that title of being my favorite. It's, ah, I could see it happening. I knew it. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way about my dojo loaches. Never had them, and then once I got them, they just so super entertaining. Uh, loads of fun. Come up to the tank, nibble whiskers all the whole nine. So it's that's why this hobby is such a special thing because I've been doing this a long time. I had uh, Senegal bikers a long time ago, twenty something years ago, and I loved them. They were they were awesome, but they're nothing like these. I mean, it's a it's a completely different game than these. Uh, if anybody is watching that has not seen those, it is an Enlicari and a Lepredi, uh bikers. I call them bikers. And they are amazing. From the shop that you were talking about earlier, Schools of Fish down in Richmond, Virginia, uh, my buddy Rama sold them to me, even though he didn't want to because they were kind of shop mascots. But uh, I'm so glad he did. It's a, it's a game changer. That's awesome. Uh, give me two favorite fish that are actually great together, that are friends. Two of your favorite that you can just put in a tank together. They always work. Oh, boy. Uh, ooh, you know what? Okay. I got to throw Mama a bone right now because my other favorite tank, well, I, I've got a few favorite tanks in this house, but the other one is that combo of the Rummy Nose Tetras and Discus. That's a, that's a beautiful tank. She's done an amazing job on that tank. And just seeing the discus just sit there and be beautiful while the rummy nose are kind of all over the place, that's a, that's a combo that uh, it's magical, that combo. I do love the Cardinal Tetra discus combo. Uh, that's kind, of been, that. kind yeah. of been overdone, but it's, you can't go wrong there. Uh, discus and rams. Seems like the common thread here is discus, but uh, discus and rams is another really good one. Uh, yeah, that's there you go. <laughs> All right. I asked for two. You give me six. Um, Biz, is there a fish that you want or would like, but it's honestly skeptical about keeping? And what's the reason? Um, my favorite fish, I've, I've had no bones about it, is actually a salty fish. It's a uh, dog. Dog face puffer. That is my absolute favorite fish. Um, I would set up a a um, salt water tank just to get it. Um, I just love the way it looks. I love dogs. I love puffers. What else can you have? What else? What, what else would it be? <laughs> I, I like that combo too. Uh, for me, 
if I had a fish room three times the size of this one, I would love to do that center of the room tank, uh, maybe go like five foot by five foot or six by six. Oh my God. Uh, kind of a shallow tank and do rays. Uh, stingrays are another thing that have been a, a huge obsession for me. I've never had one on my YouTube channel, um, but I've always been infatuated with them. And, you know, I, I'm jealous of, of our friend up in Nova Scotia that has the black diamonds. I don't know that I would go that far. I think I'd probably just stick with the, with the easy ones, the Matoros. I love those so much. Um, and I can awesome. see doing four or five of them in a, in one of those tanks, like in the center of the room, I, I would love that. You know what? And, and I'm with you all the way on that too. When I, I when we were in uh, at Chicago's Acapella, Chicago's Stingrays was yes. there. They had that, they had the Matoros, they had the black diamonds. Oh yes. my God, like crispy, so smooth. They are awesome fish. Awesome the fish. black diamonds. I mean, if I could, if I could find somebody that would be like, hey, you have a YouTube channel, we'd love to send you black diamonds. Oh, I would do it then. But if I'm paying for them, which I fully expect to do, uh, I'd probably go with the, the Matoros. Because the, yeah. the Black Diamonds, they are probably the most beautiful thing in the water, period. But they're sure. just so expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have given me uh, two fishy friends. Give me two fish enemies that should never be in a tank together. I mean... I could go kindergarten. I could be like Cardinal Tetras and Oscars, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> okay, here's another easy one. Flower horns and anything and dovi and anything. <laughs> Mic drop. It's a fact. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I've ever had a... a, a combo of fish that I've just tried and tried and tried and tried and could never get them to work. The the nemesis for me for many, many years was having two arowanas together. I always struggled to be able to do that. And then we were able to pull it off uh, and we had it for several years, uh, two arowanas in a eight foot tank, very similar in size to this one. And, uh, and then one of them jumped out on Father's Day. I guess that was like seven years ago yesterday uh, that that happened. But uh, as a matter of fact, it would be seven days because it was also a Sunday. Um, yeah, so that didn't last long. But uh, that was one that I struggled to be able to get in the same tank as, as multiple arowanas. And I wanted to start off by saying happy Father's Day to you and all the fathers that are in the chat, man. My bad. You know, happy Father's Day to you. Yes, you too, my friend. And it's way right on. professional. <laughs> Are the glasses bothering you? I kind of like them. I kind of want to keep I love them. This will be my it. Casey Neistat move here. It's like looking at me except balder and paler. <laughs> and much prettier. <laughs> he spit his drink out. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your favorite bottom feeders. Coolie loaches. Really? They're just so sneaky and elusive, and they look like snakes, and they're really cute and cool. Um, yeah. I mean, I I love them all. I love Cory Katz. I love, you know, all the Plecos, but Coolie loaches I've always been fascinated with. And you want to talk about an easy fish. Again, I, I do like kind of preaching things that are easy for you know, the, whether it's beginners or, or just people uh, that are maybe not having the best luck, uh, you can't kill coolie loaches. I mean, you could try and you won't kill them. But yeah, I love those. You can put them in a 75 gallon full of African cichlids. Yeah, they'll just bury themselves in the gravel. <laughs> they did that until I changed, <laughs> changed the water and un unearthed them. And then it was coolie loach everywhere. And I was so upset. <laughs> I had one, and this is this is embarrassing. I've never told this story publicly before. We had one in the shop, and I just thought it was gone. Like I thought we lost it. You know, it, it, it for whatever reason it was just gone. And when we drained all, all the tanks and transported them from the shop to our house, or not this house, but our last house, uh, the tanks sat in my basement for probably three months, 
with like the only water that was in it was water that was like down in the gravel. Sure. And damn if that fish wasn't in there the whole time and was perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Some resilient, resilient little suckers. Yep. All right. Very good. Now let's jump into what's your favorite dessert? Ooh. Oh, man. You would think I would have thought of this. Um, I asked the tough questions. And look at me. That should be an easy one. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm going to go with Lisa bought me one of these for Father's Day, and we didn't even touch it, which is kind of embarrassing. But I'm going to go with good old-fashioned cherry pie. Good old fashioned cherry pie. Cherry pie. Let's put a put a dollop of ice cream next to it, man. A, Forget about it. A dollop. Okay. Dollop. You got to get fancy words That's, when you got glasses like this on. You got to use fancy is that, words. Is that the uh, same pie that was in American Pie that got thrusted on? Well, I don't like those kind of pies. I like, <laughs> mine, I like mine whole, and that was an apple pie too, by the way. Okay. Uh, All right. This apple one is pie. cherry, which would be even more disturbing but anyway uh yeah that was a that was that was an apple pie favorite breakfast food oh <laughs> french toast french toast eggs bacon pancakes waffles uh all of it i mean look at me come on obviously I, i'm a connoisseur of <laughs> breakfast foods um, but yeah, French toast, I don't care where it's from, it's going okay. down. All right. It'll take some French toast from Italy, huh? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all, it, look, you're, you're going to mix milk and water and eggs and maybe a little cinnamon and you dip yes. bread in it and you fry it up. It, you can't really screw that up. So this is, this is a fact. This is a fact. I love it. It's, it's one of my faves also. Um, favorite cereal. I think, were you there when we talked about this at Aquashella? Maybe not. As a matter of fact, I know you weren't. It was uh, Fish Room Fever and Joe Shrimp Shack. My favorite breakfast cereal is the first minute of Fruity Pebbles. I was there. I remember that. And I yeah. still believe that's your favorite. For the first minute, because after the first minute, still delicious, but not the same experience once they're all soggy. Uh so yeah, Fruity Pebbles for that first minute. After that, um, it would probably be Crunch Berries. None of that healthy stuff. My favorite is Captain Crunch without the Crunch Berries, the original. I also go with Frosted Flakes. The only reason I hate Fruity Pebbles because they're little and they are soggy after a minute. And it's like tasting a rainbow. I don't like to taste the rainbow. Not in my well, cereal. Frosted Flakes do that too, though. It takes and them a little minute. They're a little rougher. Those fruity pebbles are about that big. It's like a million little pebbles in your in your bowl. When when Fred was chasing Barney for him, like, dude, just let him have them, G. Can you imagine if fruity pebbles were the size of frosted flakes? That would be that would be a game, a life changer. That would if you be could have the big giant fruity pebbles like that. That'd be, be different. That the other one for me, and, and regular Captain Crunch. My mouth just gets beat up when I eat those. I mean, I, I have a problem with that. Uh, but I, I'm also a sucker for frosted mini wheats. You put the, you get the strawberry ones or the blueberry ones. Forget about it. That's yeah. They are good. They, those are good. I do. I, I'll, I'll take a frosted mini wheat. Those are good. Uh, yeah. Uh, favorite fast food joint. Chick fil A. Very nice. And the, and the funny thing is, I will eat the exact same thing every single time. And I, I don't know if I've ever even had anything different. Number two, large size with the Coke, no ice. That's it for me. That is the, that's the chicken sandwich, but it's the spicy chicken sandwich. Very nice. I do the spicy chicken deluxe combo all the time. See, yeah. I don't, I don't Tomatoes, want. The, the, I like, I like it all. Yeah, I don't, I don't want all that other stuff on it. I just want the Chick Fil A sauce and the spicy little patty there and uh, and the pickles. It's all I need. Lisa someone says, says McDonald's don't lie. Yeah, someone says you're lying. <laughs> I, I, listen, I love me some McDonald's, but if there was a McDonald's next door to a Chick-fil-A, 
I'm going to ch pick Chick-fil-A, but we don't have a Chick-fil-A in, uh, in King George. We got a McDonald's oh, wow. a mile and a half from our house. So that's kind of convenient. Favorite restaurant. This one is going to sound so goofy and I'm pretty sure it is a national chain. Uh, I think, uh, I am a hibachi fanatic. Uh, it is Sakura Japanese steakhouse. Yes. That is where the family knows to take me for birthdays, uh, which I have one coming up by the way, Lisa, don't forget, uh, it's not the same now, though, because with COVID, they don't cook in front of you and flip the knives and throw the shrimp and make little volcanoes. They don't do all of that. But uh, but that's, yeah, that's the one for me. And that's always been, if it's my time to pick and it's a special occasion, sure. there's no there's no debate. We know we're going there. And with that, we have a Kobe Steakhouse where they do the same thing. Flip it in the hat, throw it in your mouth. Throw I've, I've been with Kobe. It is Kobe is equally as good. Either one of those be perfectly fine with me. The yum yum sauce is what does it. I mean, that's that's the best stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Favorite food to cook, John? I. This is going to sound really cheesy, but I am a. There, it's two. There's two things. I love cooking breakfast. I, I always have. Uh, one of my kind of fantasies is to have a big giant griddle at some point. Um, one that's like permanently there, which I don't know if I'm ever going to be that rich, but I would love to have a big giant griddle and have my eggs cooking over there. And my, you know, I, that's always been kind of a fantasy for me. Uh, okay. The other is tacos. I, you know what? I'm the only one in my, in my household that eats it, but I make a meat that will just knock you right off your feet. And, uh, Everybody oh. else, everybody else in my house is is too scared of it, you know. Too scared of your meat. Well, don't make it sound weird, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put. Look, I mix some meat. scary meat. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me take these glasses off. <laughs> I make uh, it's it's ground beef and it's ground sausage, and I put okay. a whole bunch of other stuff in there. It's not overly spicy. It's just the kids in this house are boring. They just want the the regular hamburger meat with just the little packet of seasoning in it. So I got to make two batches every time we do tacos, one for me and one for everybody else. Weird. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. It's funny because um, whatever you cook and you put on Aquafunk's plate, he eats it like a gerbil. He, he eats like one side first then the other side, then the third side. Me, you know, I come from a family of down south. We mix all that joint together. It's all going to the same place. You shovel that joint in. You yeah. got to taste everything together. <laughs> See, uh, I'm weird. I, I will mix. Like, obviously, if you're having, like, country fried steak, you got to dip that in the mashed potatoes or turkey. Absolutely. You got to mix Absolutely. that. You got to sop it up. Yeah, you got to get the gravy on there and the, and the mashed potatoes. Uh, but I'm also a guy that will i don't like things on my plate touching other things i'll mix them together myself but i don't want them touching while they're on the plate so i'll be sitting there dividing everything up like rain man or something but oh my god <laughs> great movie by the way <laughs> i'm wondering when the movie talk is coming up <laughs> favorite wrestler oh it's coming <laughs> um you know what there oh, i mean I, I'm not going to go all the way back in the day. Uh, I'm going to go more recent. I haven't watched wrestling in quite some time. I, I took my 17-year-old, who was probably 13 at the time, uh, took him to an event. John Cena was there and Kane and you know, all of the – isn't there a guy like Dirk Diggler or something? I know that's the guy from Boogie Nights, but isn't there a wrestler named that too? I don't know, but he was there. But uh, it's Steve Austin. I mean, it's – it's always going to be Steve Austin. Not only is he named after the $6 million man, but he's just, I love that guy, regardless of whether he's a wrestler or not. I listen to his podcast. I, I love everything that guy's do that guy does. So it would be, it would be uh, Steve stone cold. Okay. All right. Favorite type of music. You can't do that. That's just not, it's not fair to do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> people um, want to know. <laughs> you know, I, I I I would have to go with metal. I mean, it, that's kind of. I was raised on country music. Okay. I uh, I had a very very close friend whose father introduced me to old soul music and R and B. That's how I was introduced to Sam Cooke and Otis Redding and all of the the big names from back in that day. Sam Cooke's my very favorite nice. singer. He always has been, always will be. Very eclectic. Uh, but then my sister introduced me to Metallica and Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio and uh, Guns N' Roses and you know from the late seventies, early eighties, and that's that's what stuck with me. I will always be into that uh so it, it would have to be metal but i i like it all i could give you a top 10 of every genre even country <laughs> what is your favorite karaoke song to sing i'm gonna surprise you because you're gonna be like no come on uh, i haven't sang karaoke in a very very long time well, you're going to do it tonight. Oh, I will do no such thing. <laughs> it's, uh, you're, every single person in the chat is going to be like, no, not possible. But it's Faithfully from Journey. Um, really? That was kind of my go-to back in the day. Uh, it, yeah, that it would be Faithfully. And, and yes, I was able to pull it off. I'm no Steve Perry, but I was able to, to pull it off. That was a long time ago, though. Very nice. Very nice. I would be uh, Ain't Nothing But a G Thing, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. And yes, I would do both. One, two, into the boat. Snoop Doggy Dogg and Dr. Dre is at the doubt. Oh. Here's the problem with that. I mean, I, I love that song. Of course I do. How how many people would laugh at me if I did that? You know what I mean? It's it karaoke. Would, I know, but That's what it's for. <laughs> I'd be the only person there not drunk and uh, and everybody would be laughing at me. <laughs> Next time we're somewhere together, we got to go karaoke. You can be dry. Okay. That, <laughs> that works. If I can wear the glasses, I'll do it. Favorite soft drink? I see you drinking it right now. It, I, there's not even any thought. It's Coca-Cola. I have a Coke problem. I, I am admitting to it. I need an intervention. Uh, I have a Coke problem. Not only do I love the soda, but I have like... I, I've got a whole collection of Coca-Cola stuff. My brother, this is what's funny. My brother yesterday, he lives about 45 minutes away from me. And uh, and I was chatting with him yesterday. He called to wish me a happy Father's Day. And I said, listen, we're, we're trying to you know look around and see if we can't maybe buy a, a house that has a building on the property for our business and stuff like that. He said, I've got the perfect thing. It's an old Coca-Cola bottling factory that's for sale. And it's actually for sale, like way below what our budget would be. And it has an old house on the property. And I'm like, oh, and I went online and looked at it and I'm like, this could be it. But somebody already bought the damn thing. So we're, we're too late for that. But the big billboards are still on the side of the building and everything. Coca-Cola, it would be absolute heaven for me. But it's not going to happen. Uh, what's your favorite app on your phone? Brawl Stars. I mean, it's a game. You, you mean like a like a productivity app or any app? It's your favorite app? Uh, it's Brawl Stars. It's a game. Um, obviously, the YouTube app is a pretty pretty big deal too to me. Um, but I, I do all of my YouTube watching on my desktop, not on my phone. I, I very rarely watch videos on my phone. So, um, so yeah, it would have to be. It would have to be Brawl Stars. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll do it. Favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. Okay. Plain and simple. It's, it's, it's football. It's family. It's lots of eating. It's, uh, it, it's the one time where I am actually okay with just all of the food on my plate getting mixed together because it's all going to get mixed together anyway. Uh, so yeah, it would be Thanksgiving. All right. Uh, favorite sport? Baseball. And favorite position? Shortstop. 
I, I mean, okay, wait a minute. Are you asking what position I would play if I was to pick up in a tournament, or are you just my favorite position? Your favorite position in baseball. To watch people play is shortstop. Okay. All long. Most active on the team usually. My okay. guy is pretty daggone good. Uh, he should be an all-star this year. And uh, so, yeah, that's – team. if your team doesn't have a good shortstop, your team is cooked. So, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. The green one from Briars with the little teeny chips. Very nice. Very nice. As long as nobody licked it in the store. <laughs> right. <laughs> Favorite celebrity crush? Chris Hemsworth. Is <laughs> oh, you meant girl? Thor's your guy. <laughs> I mean, you know my wife's in here, right? You, you want me to say <laughs> Okay. All seriousness. Uh, you like the hair. <laughs> with Chris Hemsworth, it's the eyes, it's the body, it's the voice, the accent, it's everything. He's total package, absolutely. And if he's not available, uh, another Chris, Chris, uh, um, Chris Evans. God, why is it popping out of my head? Um, okay. If I had to pick a female, and Lisa, Lisa knows this, and she would probably agree with me. Uh, it would be Selma Hayek. Okay, very nice. Selma Hayek. We'll take it. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite car? Um, ooh, you know what? I'm going to go with a 1988 white Ferrari Testarossa. That is a... It, 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 Miami Vice was a big thing for me uh, growing up, and uh, Lisa thought it was Keanu Reeves. I love Keanu yeah. Reeves too, uh, but Keanu Reeves is the perfect human being. But anyway, um, if, if if you can't find a, a Testarossa, it would be a early '80s Lamborghini Countach. Okay. All right, mine is a little bit uh, '77. Uh, Trans Am, black T top, bucket seats. Okay. Not the shirt, but the Trans Am. I wouldn't mind the uh, what is it, an '89 Firebird, the uh, the kit car. I wouldn't yeah. mind that one either. Yeah, that 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 is it. Done it, done it, done it. Oh man, come on now. That my yeah. Michael yeah. Knight was a god to me. If I saw <laughs> David Hasselhoff in public, I would bow at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Hoff. <laughs> Favorite shoe ever. Favorite shoe? You know, uh, I. you wouldn't think of this as a skater thing. I was a skater as a kid. Um, it would be it. it would be the old school Chucks. Very nice. Um, I used to wear those to skate in, and then it became Vans, and then all of that, other, you know. Yeah. Then I switched to Vans, but um, but like right now, if I could get any shoe I wanted, it would probably be that uh, the white, black, and red original Jordans, whatever those are called. I, I mean, I remember when those were on the shelf at the store, along with the North Carolina blue and white ones and all of that. The 11s, yeah, North Carolinas. Mm -hmm. The cores are the ones you're referring to. I like the breads, which are the black and red ones. See, I like those too. Of course, I do the Chicago Bulls, but but the black, white, and red, I I've always loved those. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. I love these questions. This is so fun. Can we do this all night? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite emoji? It's this guy, the oh. thinking guy. Yeah, I I, okay. I like that guy, and I use this guy a lot. Uh, okay. And, uh, and the, yeah, those would be my favorites. I've never in my life been asked that question. I love that question. Uh, yeah, that that's the thinker. That's, that's yeah. my favorite one. <laughs> I've done my due diligence. I try to try to get the, <laughs> I love it. Somebody wants you to just talk fish and you do that all the time. So I just like to give you a, a wind down. <laughs> and I appreciate it very much. We'll talk fish too, but this is more fun. Yeah. Favorite game console. And you're old school, so I'm 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 looking for I'm not looking for anything, but go ahead. 
the original NES changed my life. Uh, you're you're a few years younger than me, but I mean, I think I, I don't know how old I was, 11 or 12 when that came out uh, with Super Mario and Duck Hunt and all of those. Uh, but I, I mean, I'm a PlayStation guy now. Okay. I have, a, I have a PlayStation and an Xbox. I bought an Xbox just so I could play Fortnite with my kids, and I ended up being really, really bad at that game. Um, but it's, uh, it's tough. All I do is keep jumping. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that's that game is so ridiculously hard. It, but um, so right now it would be uh, PS4. I haven't gotten my hands on the PS5. I don't know if I will get one, but uh, but but yeah, the original. NES that was uh, for a young John Hudson. That was a big deal when I opened that on Christmas morning. Outstanding, a young John Hudson. I like that. <laughs> uh, favorite. What's your favorite movie? Wow, you're a movie guy, so I know this it's, is this is this is it. It's just not fair. It's like, what's your favorite singer? I mean, I've I've got so many of them. Um, I know what you think I'm going to say. I, I no, no. <laughs> I know that's the the movie that we share together. Yeah. Um, but it's so the, many. The na- it, it it has to be Goodfellas. I mean, it, it has to be Goodfellas. I'm not mad or, at that. Or really anything directed by Martin Scorsese that has Robert De Niro in it or Leonardo DiCaprio in it. So Gangs of New York, The Departed, The Casino. I mean, the all, of, all of those <laughs> movies, you can just forget about it. It's If those movies are on, cancel my plans. I mean, that's just going to be. Uh, look, you know, when, it, when it's a classic, you, you turn it on and you watch it from wherever it is. You just can't stop. You can't stop. I don't. I don't think there's been a masterpiece quite like Goodfellas since then. There's been a lot of good movies, but everything about that movie was absolutely masterclass. I mean, that you just can't do better than that. Ooh, Heat! Oh, we got some good ones in the chat. Shawshank, Heat, The Last Starfighter. <laughs> Shawshank's a great movie. Schindler's List is a great movie. Uh, I, 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 there's so many. It's just. It's just crazy. Back to the Future series. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's not even. <laughs> huh? Bad Boys 1, 2, and 3 versus Rush Hour 1, 2, and 3. Which one was the better uh, trio? I can't get enough of, of Will and Martin together. Those two are. High five. Yep. I'm with that. That's, uh, yeah. I, I, I love can't. Chris Tucker and Jackie, but it's something about Mike Lowry and, uh, and 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 uh, Marcus Burnett, man. Michael Lowry is that guy that every human being on Earth wants to be. Every man on Earth wants to be, but we all end up more like Marcus Burnett. But, <laughs> but that's, that's what we want to be is is Mike Mike Lowry. Mike, Mike Lowry. Lowry. Mike Lowry. <laughs> you not you gotta sound sexy. Sound sexy like him. You. <laughs> I mean, even Joey Pants and uh, and and Taylor Leone. I mean, they're, they're, what a great cast in the first one. That, that that movie was amazing. Bad Boys One is my absolute favorite out of all of my. No question. I love it. number one. They both were hype. You had a young, skinny Martin. You had a, and they were both pure, unadulterated. They was letting people have it. Martin, that was Martin Lawrence in his prime. There's no no debating that. The only the, the only thing in my opinion that's up for debate, and I shame on me, I can't remember the kid's name, but it's the scene when Marcus's daughter's date shows up and knocks on the door. In part two, uh, Reggie. Part two, yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. And he was in part three too. That. Oh yeah, scene, sure was. Yeah. That Reggie. scene was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it actually seems like something me and three thousand would do. <laughs> yeah. When our daughters grow up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Favorite school subject, John? When I was in school, it was shop class. I know how cheesy that sounds, but if I was to pick right now, it would be history. But when I was in school, I hated history. So 
Uh, but yeah, shop class. I know that's that's a cop out, but it's kind of what I ended up doing for a living. So it was kind of setting me up for the works. future. It works. Uh, most watched fish tuber. Now I know as a fish tuber, you might not watch a lot of fish tubers, but the most watched, do you, would you think? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know if you would consider him a fish tuber, uh, but Tanner Serpa is, is one of those that the second I get a notification that he uploads a video, I'm, I'm watching it. Uh, part time is another guy that, uh, and, and, and his beautiful wife, I will definitely watch theirs. Um, there's no question. The one I watch the most is myself because I'm editing the videos and watching them over and over and over and over again. But, Absolutely. Uh, I think Tanner Serpa is a genius. I, I, I really do think he is. And, uh, so that, yeah, that's, that would be my vote. It'll be probably different next week. No, no disrespect to Tanner, but sure. um, I just think that guy's brilliant. And every single video he does is so different from the last one that he did. It's just, I don't know how he does it. You met him. He's the most humble guy on earth. I don't know where all that comes from. I mean, he's, he's just brilliant. Shout out to Tanner. Uh, question in the chat, favorite dog. Is it the Chihuahuas or do you actually have a favorite one? I love my Wawas. We call them Wawas. Um, I'm a guy that loves the little dogs and the big dogs. I'm not a jerk like Bob Steenfot. Uh I like both. I, I'm, I don't think that there's a better dog on planet Earth than a golden retriever. I mean, I, I think that's head to toe the best best thing that's ever happened to the, the canine species. Uh, and I cannot wait to have a little bit more room for dogs to run around. And I will have another one at some point. Best dog I ever had. Um, besides my beagle was a uh, big dog was Rottweiler. I've Rest had two Rottweilers. I love them too. Love them. Love them. My only issue. Anything since with Rottweilers. The only issue is the stigma that's attached to them, which is phony. And I think it's wrong. Yeah. Uh, and their their life expectancy is just so short. And that's and that oh my god, it hurt my heart. I cried like a little boy when when we had to put them down. Yep. Blazia fell down the steps. Just ah, uh, it, it was it's ah, uh, I couldn't get another one after that. After Rocky, R.I.P. Rest in paradise. I couldn't I couldn't get another one. Couldn't get another one. Yep, it's tough. They become family members. What is your favorite seafood? None. Allergic? No, I just think it's gross. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, the fish it, guy that doesn't like to eat seafood. Okay, I, figure. I, I, yeah, I mean, I know how weird that is, but uh, but it's uh, but yeah, I I've never liked the taste of seafood. I I grew up in an area in Virginia that's called the Northern Neck, which is actually where we live now too. It's on the Potomac River. My entire family would was always out on the water crabbing and, and fishing and all of that and i so i should like seafood but i've just never never been a fan of it the only seafood i tolerate is going back to sakura or kobe getting the little appetizer shrimps that they throw in your mouth that's the only way i'll eat it. <laughs> okay favorite pizza toppings multiple uh it's going to be pepperoni and jalapenos okay i like that I'm not mad at that at all if I can only have one, it's going to be pepperoni because, you know, heartburn. Okay. <laughs> okay. John. You've just leveled up. Uh-oh. Very nice, sir. These are the Inferno rapid fire questions that are coming up next. It's either this or it's either that. It's either this or it's either that. Are you ready, sir? Yes. Here we go. Hot or cold? Hot. Bath or shower? Shower. Short or tall? I'm not allowed to ask any any qualifying questions. Just, Just pick one. Tall then. <laughs> <laughs> Goldfish or beta? Beta. 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 I have them both, lots of them, but yeah. 
Beta or Guppy? Betas. Beta or Killy? Betas. Wow. Okay, I can get them. How I make my living, Drew? Come on. I mean, what do you? I think know it. Say? I know it. All right. Okay. <laughs> hey, play it cool, hot shot. But no, it's. I mean, I love all of those other things, but yeah, that's. Uh, you know, beta betas. That's that's kind of the deal. Okay. All right. Arapaima or alligator gar? Arapaima. Arapaima or arowana? Arowana. Mm. Mammals or reptiles? Mammals. Starburst or Skittles? Starburst. Really? The pink ones. <laughs> <laughs> you just get a bag of the pink boys? <laughs> the pink ones are, are all gone. The reds one, red ones will be fine. Okay. <laughs> Fruity Pebbles, but you wouldn't pick Skittles? I, I love Skittles, but you asked yeah. me which one. I'm going to take Starburst first. Okay. All right. M&M's or Reese's? Reese's Pieces or Reese's Peanut Butter Cups? We'll go with Reese's Pieces and M regular M&M's. Reese's Pieces. Okay. M&M Peanut or Peanut Butter Cup? Peanut Butter Cup. Okay. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Great movie or a great show? Great movie. Tacos or burgers? I'll put the taco on burger. I knew it. I knew you were going to say that, how you made your taco. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? No. Do pineapples belong on pizza? No, but I can tolerate it. Okay. Okay. Bacon or sausage? Bacon. Uh, pigs or cows? Cows. Mornings or nights? Nights. Hate breakfast, or for din breakfast for dinner or dinner for dinner? Breakfast for dinner. Hell okay. yeah. Especially if I cook it. <laughs> <laughs> Weekdays or weekends? Uh, they're all the same. Right. I mean, they're all the same now. <laughs> I don't yeah. care either way. TikTok or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram or YouTube? Come on. Next question. <laughs> Disney World or Universal Studios? Universal. Very nice. Hot and coffee I can, or iced I can coffee? Put on the rides. Huh? Okay. A very, you know what? He says that. And because of Jason from Primetime, I think I'm going to have to do a video of my trip to Universal. It's going to be ridiculously funny. But whatever, John. When you're when you're six foot nine, you can't fit on rides. I mean, that's just what happens. Dude, I'm so upset about that whole thing. I would be too. And I'm it wouldn't bring it up. I was just being funny. Oh god, I hate it. <laughs> I was in the thing like this. It was the shoulders. It wasn't even this. But then when they tried to put I just I was like, please just try. I gotta ride Harry Potter, please. Just sit on it. Sir. <laughs> Let me just suck it in. It wouldn't work. Um, let, me, let me tell you something. You invited me to go there with you, and I will tell you this. If we tried to get on there and they wouldn't let you on, I would have totally ridden it by myself. I would have been so pissed. <laughs> I would have been upset. Have been upset. <laughs> um, uh, sandy Beach or Mountaintops? Sandy Beach. Too cold up in the mountains. Hot coffee or iced coffee? Hot. Okay. All right. A little later, super early. Uh, me, super early. Lisa, super late. Oh, wow. Just threw your wife under the bus there. <laughs> she knows it. She would tell you the same thing. <laughs> it's always a little late for me. Um, brains or body? Brains. I'm 46. I mean, <laughs> past all that, I got a beautiful woman, so I don't need to worry about it. But this is if, a fact. if I if I was single, the the brains would mean more. Okay. Well, that leads us to this: boobs or butt? Boobs all day long. Come on. There you go. Adam I'm boy. a white guy. I mean, that's. <laughs> 
white guys are into boobs. That's just the way it is. <laughs> there it goes. It's absolutely the way it goes. We like butts too, but it's mainly, mainly boobs. <laughs> fish sticks or nuggets? Nuggets, because I don't eat fish. Ew. Okay. All right. Um, CVS or Walgreens? Walgreens. French fries or tater tots? French fries. That's gross. Buffy or Blade? Blade. Come on. Okay. All right. A Buffy was kicking some ass. Yeah, but come on. Blade. <laughs> all day long. Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? Hadouken. Uh, no, I probably still would go Mortal Kombat. I love Street Fighter, but I, I think I would still go with uh, Mortal Kombat. I put a lot of quarters into Mortal Kombat machines. I had the opposite. I had my quarters at the arcade for Street Fighter. Challenge anybody. Let's get it. Very nice. Mario Luigi. Luigi, because I like the underdog. Okay. Good. <laughs> cats. I, I'm sorry. You cut off. I'm sorry. Dogs or cats? I, I'm a dog guy. I love cats. We have a bunch of them, but I, I'm going to choose dogs. Okay. Lois Lane or Mary Jane? Lois Lane. So you want problems with Superman? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Superman guy. I've got him. I've got him back there getting gripped by Thanos's gauntlet back there. Nice. <laughs> I I love Mary Jane. I, I love Spider Man. I, I mean, of course I do. Mm -hmm. But I I mean, I grew up with Christopher Reeve as as Superman. I mean, and I don't even know the name of the actress that played Lois Lane, but that that was my childhood right there. Christopher Reeves was a god to me. Yeah, so. yeah, he was awesome. Uh, cash or credit? Cash. Plane, train, or car? Car. Pineapples on pizza? We already asked, but home cooked or going out? Going out. Lisa's a great cook, but it's easier to go out. Absolutely. Absolutely. What is the wildest DM you've ever had? Oh, man. Um, I am friends on Instagram with a, an MLB baseball player. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of wild when uh, when I the first time I got a, a message from him. Um, so, yeah, it has to be that. Okay. He's currently a free agent, which bums me out. But, uh, but yeah, he's a customer of ours, too. So that makes it even cooler. That works. That works. Why don't you like John Wall? <laughs> I think John Wall, when healthy, is one of the best basketball players on planet Earth. The problem is, is he's never healthy. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I remember the day he was drafted. I remember being super excited and super nervous at the same time because I'm like, He's a little childish, and uh, he's a great ball player. There's no about no doubt about it. But his time in DC was just riddled with injuries. So, mm -hmm. uh, famous people that you've met, seen, or talked to. How much longer did you want this to go? <laughs> Give me your top three. Uh, top three would be Nicolas Cage, uh, The Rock, and Denzel Washington. But there's also Steven Tyler, uh, oh. Sean Connery, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I could go all. I worked at the Capitol Building. I mean, uh, they would all come through there. Uh, Bono. Just, I could keep going. It, it was a long, long list. Uh, none of them were really like hanging out. It was more like doing my job. But I talked with uh, Nicolas Cage, Steven Tyler. Um, and who was the other one I said? The Rock? I, yeah. The Rock, I didn't really talk to, but I, the other two, I talked to quite a bit. So, oh, it's outstanding. Um, I like this question. A real quick question: Why um, a cop then, and uh, not so much now? 
not at all now. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, my dad died in 1997. I was 23 years old and I had always dreamt of being a cop. And I was like, when that happened, he dropped dead at 54 years old. I said, you know what? Life is short. I've always wanted to do this. I got to go do this. And, uh, and so I did, I did that for five years. It was an amazing job. Um, but after five years, I was like, I have to move on. It's just, it's too much. Uh, so yeah, it's not that I hated the job. It was just, it was just too crazy. We're going to piggyback on that in the next section because uh, you've just leveled up. You level back up. That's the installment of questions. Very good, John. I love the way that you're doing this. Let's rock right through these real quick. These are fill in the blanks. So I'm going to give you the dot, 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 and you fill it in for me. Okay. And jumping on the job, what's the worst job you ever had? I... I really don't think I've ever had a bad job. Like I've, I've never had a job that I hated. Okay. Um, I worked at Domino's for two days as a second job. And that was, wasn't a bad job. It was just bad because it was a second job. I don't know. I, I've never really had a bad job. One that I hated. Okay. All right. What was the first job you ever had? Well, we're not going to count working for my father as a teenager. I mean, I worked for him from the time I was 14 until I graduated high school. But after high school, well, the first job that was not attached to my family, I worked at a sports authority uh, oh, in okay. Potomac Mills Mall. I worked there for two years, and that was awesome. That was when I was still in high school. Okay. All right. Now, you had a 29-gallon with an arowana. Did you name it? Or if not, what was the name of your very first or the fish that you first named? You know, I was never a naming the fish guy. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I ever named a fish, I'm pretty sure was when I, I bought uh, the first arowana that I bought when Lisa and I were together. Uh, and his name was Sully. Um, and that, yeah, that's, that's the one. Sully. Is that off of the Monsters, Inc. monster? It absolutely was. Yes. <laughs> Um, if you can star in any movie, what would it be? Like a movie that's already been made or yeah, if you can remake and star in any movie, Tyler Durden and fight club. Okay. Ben Ochart said he will, he would be Bruce Willie in uh fifth element when he was on last week. That's not bad. Uh, John McClane from the Die Hard series. Wouldn't be bad. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I could come up with a long list of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, John Wick. Sorry, I'm still thinking well, of him. Uh, John Wick, were you about to say? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, best vacation spot is? The Florida Keys. Okay. Simple as that. <laughs> That's it been there one time it was absolute heaven and we've been talking about going back ever since absolutely love that place now you have quite a few tanks and you've got a lot a lot of love in all of your fish there but if you could create any amount of money create your very own dream tank i know we were talking about if you had a place three times bigger than that would that be your dream tank that that big one there what would you stock it with again well, no, that's not a dream tank because that okay. one's realistic. Like okay. I mean, that, that one we could definitely do. We could definitely do. Okay. Uh, so when I look at dream tank, I look at something that is just, I have, a, I'm, I'm as likely to drive an 88 Ferrari Testarossa as I am to getting this. Uh, it would be a indoor, in the floor, like 12,000 gallon pond. And it would be with all of the fish that I've always dreamt of having at their full glory. Oh my Arowana, God. Arowanas, red tail cats, big uh, datnoids, you know, all the big stuff, big Paku, uh, all, all basically everything you see on the Ohio fish rescue channel would be exactly. That's it. <laughs> exactly what rich has actually the, 
the converted pool. That's awesome. Um, question from the chat. If you had to do it all over again, would you choose YouTube or would you just be a hobbyist, um, I guess, fish owner or store owner? I, I understand how cheesy this is going to sound, but I firmly consider myself to be one of the luckiest people on earth to do what I do for a living. Uh, I can do what I love to do without the headaches of operating a fish store. So it would be YouTube. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's a dream to be able to do what I do for a living. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I would definitely choose YouTube. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, we are going to give the chat a second to ask you some um, itching fishy questions. So as they are coming in, now is the time. But as we are waiting, if you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Notice a breeding pair of fish in your tank. What do you do? First thing you do. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. <laughs> That's the answer, right? Is that I, didn't, what it is? I didn't even hear the question. I, listen to the question, I was you? waiting to be able to give my Rob Van Winkle quote there. But <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? It is absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice a breeding pair in your tank, what's the first thing you do? Uh, make the decision of whether you want to pursue raising the fry or if you want nature to run its course. Uh, and if you want to raise the fry and completely lose control of this hobby and go absolutely crazy with it like I did back in 2010, uh, then you're going to start looking into avenues of raising those fry. A small fry tank. I mean, if it's a jaguar pair, maybe a big fry tank, but... Uh, but yeah, you know, have something to put those fry in and uh, and let the parents do their thing, which is such an amazing thing to watch, depending on what kind of fish it is. Yeah, um, I mean, the cichlids don't give a damn. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mean, uh, so yeah, you know, if you want to keep the fry, come up with your plan of how you're going to house those fry. All right. Question from the chat. How do you get rid of Hydra? It's never, it's not something I've ever dealt with. So, okay. I, I mean, I, I, that's a horrible answer, but unless you want to talk about Hydra in the Marvel series, I mean, we could talk about that. <laughs> Get you a good old Cap America in there, huh? That's right. <laughs> All right. If you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Parents are eating the babies. What's the first thing you do? Exactly what I just said. <laughs> for the, I mean, for the but, raising them, huh? Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you want to keep them, then obviously, you know, you need to take the threat of them being eaten away from the parents. If you're not in a position to be able to go out and buy a, a brand new tank, which I mean, most people can't, then something a, a simple net breeder or something like that that you can put in the tank costs you like eight bucks, and uh, you can have all the fry in there for several weeks anyway i mean again if it's a 300 spawn beta clutch you know i mean yeah. you're not going to do that but yeah if you have an african cichlid that drops you know 12 14 fries stick them in yeah. that breeder box i got one over there now i've got about 30 babies in there that's the kind of thing Same that clutch, you, yeah you just have it and you just have it there available in case you want to do something like that if you are in an absolute emergency situation, another solution, if you have a giant fish net, scoop them all up in the fish net and just leave it on the top. So the netting is down in the water sure. and the fry are in there and the other fish can't get to them. We've done that before. And, we're um, yeah. and that'll give you the time to go out and get that breeder or get a 10 gallon tank or whatever. Uh, from the chat, Trey Cole, what's the most fun thing you've bred on accident? the discus even though we haven't really had it's, it's never come up with anything like we haven't had any fry from it uh that has been fun to watch um I, I guess i shouldn't count that though because we never really got any fry out of it but uh you know when i first started breeding africans back in 2010 i mean just getting those spawns and starting to do it on purpose and raise up those fry and all of that it was 
it was a blast. So just the blanket statement, African cichlids. I'll send it. Uh, Melinda, please um, Gmail me at fishybizaquatics at Gmail. We'll talk. Uh, if you got a problem, y'all solve it. Fish has Popeye. What do you do? You go on our website and you grab up some Marison 2 and then you should be good. <laughs> Keepfishkeeping.com. That's right. You know it. And you use Fishy Biz's links so that he gets a cut from that. Link in description. <laughs> Best way to clean up water when you overflow your tank. Jesse Silva. This is another one of those things that is in most households. Uh, if it's not, you should invest in one. They're not overly expensive, and that's a shop vac. Those are designed to vacuum up water, um, and we have used them multiple times for that purpose. Um, because, I mean, if it's a big, big amount of water and you're just using towels, you're really going to struggle with that. Having something to, to suck that water all up uh, is definitely the key. Get you even a super cheap, you know, $40 shop vac and just have it in case anything like that ever happens. That's the easiest, fastest way to get it all up. And I speak from plenty of experience. Outstanding. <laughs> if you have a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Uh, what do you do when a fish is acting sick, but you don't know what it has? That's a weird acting sick i've had a few that acted sick and they weren't acting they ended up <laughs> and i had no idea it wasn't you know you could tell when you know certain things they have certain things but mm. you know i i would say don't wait for don't wait and learn the hard way that you were right you know, if the fish is obviously acting uh, suspicious, go ahead and treat it as if it is. If you don't know what the illness is, uh, something like that med trio that uh, is talked about all the time online, where it's basically all of the essential medications. You got your your general cure and your uh, um, antibiotics, your ick medication. You know, you're basically putting all of that in there. And, and play it safe and don't wait until it's too late. You know, I mean, reacting to an ill fish is, it's, I hate to say it this way, but it's almost like cancer. The, the sooner you do something about it, the more likely your fish is to pull through from it. Absolutely. Uh, Whips World, if I was going to go with uh, Father Fish Method and do the dirt tank capped with sand, if I have big diggers, would it still work if I cap the cap with river rock? Would it still work with big di uh, divers in the tank? I probably would not do that only because, I mean, if you've got sand sifters like geos and stuff like that, I mean, they're going to, they're just going to make a huge mess. And if you're going to put your soil and then a layer of sand and then a layer of gravel, I mean, you're not going to have any aquarium left. So, um, I kind of feel like that thick layer of gravel to prevent your sand sifters from sand sifting, it kind of would defeat the purpose of having that thick soil substrate. So, I, I mean, I would put non-substrate agitating fish in there is what I would do. Hippotank says, Biz, do you think there's a chance of transitioning from hobbyist to strictly fish store operator? When does the hobby become a business? That's a great question. Probably not for me since I am, you know, kind of just getting into this. I've sold, you know, a few fish. I haven't made it a business, but John, maybe you can answer to that. You know what? When you when you start a fish store, and, and I'm somebody that has been very fortunate. I have taken two hobbies of mine. Well, technically three, actually hobbies of mine that I was very passionate about and turned them into my livelihood, uh, whether it be woodworking back in 2004, um, a fish store, and then YouTube would be the third. Um, when you, when you start making a living from it, it, there's, it has to become a job. I mean, you know, when you're making your, when you're feeding your kids, 
with the money that comes from that thing that you're doing, you have to make decisions like a business owner would, even if it's just a YouTube channel, you know, you have to make decisions. If I do this thing, is it going to make my channel get punished? Am I going to tank? And all of a sudden my income is gone. You know, you have to make smart business decisions and therefore it does become a job. Now for me, I can say I, I take my YouTube channel very, very seriously. I mean, it's, I, I've, I feel like I have an obligation to tr try to do the right thing. Um, but even with that, it still doesn't feel like a job to me uh, because I just, I love doing it. I mean, it's the whole process of it is really fun. Um, so I don't really look at YouTube that way, but if you take it from being a hobbyist to being a professional and whatever it is that you're doing, it definitely does become like a, a job and it's not the same as you want it to be. If you got a problem, you'll all solve it. You notice that your fish has little white bumps, which symbolize ick. What's the first thing that you do? Raise the temperature and put in I some agree. salt. I agree. I like the natural way to do that. Raise the temp and add the salt. Works for me. Um, bully in the tank. First thing you do. If it's an African cichlid, the first thing I try is the timeout method, which usually works. I mean, it's worked a lot for us in the past. Um, and the timeout method, we've tried it several different ways. We've taken the fish and put it in a net breeder box. We've taken the fish and done the net trick where you just have the net hanging down. And we've taken the fish completely out and putting them in a tank by themselves. The removal of the fish and putting it in a tank by itself is kind of the surefire way uh, of, of getting that reset in the brain. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I understand some situations you can't do that. Uh, if you only have one tank and it's a bigger one, I, I would consider something like a, a tank divider or something like that. Even going to your local hardware store and getting some of that light diffuser and chop that up and use that as a, as a tank divider, that would be the easiest way to keep the fish separated so they don't keep getting beat up. I think I've reached the bottom. I think we had some good ones um, that come in and pass, but you know what, John? It's been an hour, 53 minutes, bro. Look, you handled yourself like a champion, like I knew you would in the hot spot here at Fishy Biz Aquatics. That's John Hudson right there of KG Tropicals. You already know what it is. I need to get Lisa Hudson in the hot spot. <laughs> Be a whole lot more fun for you, I promise. <laughs> uh, glass or acrylic tank, says Jesse Silva. I'm a traditional glass guy, but I'm not against acrylic tanks. I'm never. I'm not going to tell you I would never have an acrylic tank, but I do like a glass tank. There's somebody backstage that is eager to jump on uh, live here. Um, did not know that this was going to happen. Uh, Probably wants to talk to you, John, I, I, I would imagine. Uh, let's get him up here. Mr. 3000 is in the place to be. <laughs> hey, sorry, Drew. I got to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the president of the African-American Cichlid Club is here. <laughs> Grace is present. Oh, man. <laughs> This is where things go downhill very fast. This is, this is where it goes up. <laughs> How you doing, man? What's going on, John? Why didn't we get you down in Orlando? Ah, oh, man. Completed with my Vegas trip. <laughs> I didn't get this fish. It was sort of like uh, I had to pick. I guess I'll let that slide. That's fine. What about Chicago, though? You doing that again? Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Chicago, Good. I'll be there. Nice. Are you going? Yeah. I mean, I plan to, uh, I mean, uh, you know, that's, that's the plan. In fact, I actually have a meeting tomorrow with a bunch of the uh, like fish tube group that plans all of the, the things we we're starting to talk tomorrow to really get a good jump on doing some special things for Chicago. So, uh, cause Orlando was a lot of fun, but we didn't have those kind of specialty YouTube things, uh, so we're going to work on stuff like that. Just not yeah, I, I, eating bugs. 
I can't wait to get back to Chicago so somebody can try to rob me again. <laughs> Did that happen for real? <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> it was it was a little shenanigans in in the shy after hours. Oh, okay. No, no, Mister Three Thousand. Me and Mr. <laughs> Three Thousand have been friends for uh, over twenty some odd years. Uh, we both met John together um, at uh, Aguachella, Chicago, and uh, actually he was the one that prompted me to kind of jump into YouTube. And he was like, "Dude, you got fish. You know, you could go on YouTube." <laughs> So yeah, so there, that, that's that. I was and like, you can be way these, better than IMG. Both of these guys <laughs> made an appearance in my Aquashella video that year too. Both of y'all yeah, were. Yeah, 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 yeah. We oh, were. that's right. We did a little intro something, something. Yep, talking about all the free stuff y'all walked away with. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was, all a, right. it, was, it was definitely a gimme gimme out there. I didn't have to buy fish food for like four months. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't doing a whole lot of giveaways at, at, at Orlando. I wonder if that's going to change in Chicago. I don't know. I hope so. I mean, because I still actually have, I still have my 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 flipper magnifying glass. I got, I got that too. I still got that. And the the uh, the tank scrubber, the magnetic tank scrubber. I got that still. Yeah, yeah. And y'all y'all walked away with a lot of loot at that place. Yep. Yeah. This guy named John Snuckers in the back door. That's right, John. John was aware right. Look, he was sneaking you in the back door. <laughs> <laughs> Look, John. John was riding with us, and we were walking around in the parking lot, talking and everything else. And uh, a car oh, yeah. splash. <laughs> splashed us with muddy water all over my fresh new Jordans. So me and three thousand was like, "Hey." Let's go around and catch them, man. Let's run. And John was like, I'm not about to be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> you can walk around with dirty shoes. That ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> like, I, I got 80,000 subscribers to lose, man. I can't be out here tripping with you guys. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to head on back in. I'm done with my smoke break. I, I'm, I'm going to go back in. Go clean your shoes. Wait, I don't think you was at 100,000 back at that point. I think I had just passed a hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong, but I think I I think we had just passed it. Uh, yeah, because it was like May of 2019, I think, is when we when we passed a hundred. But it, we weren't very far past it. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on the marriage, too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a I'm a lucky guy. I don't know what. I wonder uh, what you was gonna make Lisa an honest woman. You know what's like, funny you is can't be out hanging with the bars with us, you know. <laughs> oh. and all these aqua show. This is your whole hey, life. <laughs> Drew kept me out till two fifteen Saturday night at, in That's, Orlando. That is no. He said you guys was arguing in a parking lot about a uh, about a uh, payola or something. <laughs> oh, he was complaining about the wages I was paying him for being security. Yeah. <laughs> You called me at like 1.30. Oh, I was just chilling, laying down. It was like, hey, you got to get down here. <laughs> and that was like 10.30. Are you crazy? Uh, 1.30. Whatever. Uh, you you didn't come down, down until 1.30. It's after hours. <laughs> just time and a half. I know. It's that like, was supposed to be a honeymoon, too. Yeah. The funny thing is we didn't even really realize we were on our honeymoon until we were already there. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, this is kind of our honeymoon. Okay. The, the crazy thing married. is when you were live streaming, married. when you got there and you was talking about you guys was married, it stopped me. And I was like, wait, what? And then you was talking about getting married in the back of a barn. I thought it was like <laughs> an old story. <laughs> but you was talking about recently. It was too so much money to get married in backwoods, they, man. They, they had put <laughs> in their community tab, which one of these four do you think are true? And it right. was in the bigger house. Um we're getting, you know, we're doing a, a second business. Uh, we got married, or it was a, a, it was a fourth one. So, when they talking about the old lady married them deep in the woods, I'm sitting there like, what? And then they went to the gas station for Din Din. <laughs> and those are absolute facts. That is not us making up a story. Now, we didn't go out in front of a campfire in the middle of the woods and get married. I mean, we 
we went to these people's house. It was a big, gorgeous, beautiful house on the water, but you had to go through the woods and down the long winding gravel driveway to get to it. Uh, but it, it's absolutely true. It, it was an old lady. You're making way too much money for that, man. Hey, <laughs> I am I'm past all that stuff, and so is Lisa. It's like, hey, we wasted yeah, a lot of money. At least went to City Hall where there. you didn't have to go endanger your life. <laughs> oh, <my bears. laughs> it, it wasn't like that. <laughs> there was no danger there. Uh, but we literally did have uh, have dinner at a gas station. Look up Horns in uh, Port Royal, Virginia. H-O-R-N-E-S. That's where we ate. It's literally a gas station convenience store that has a little diner in there. That's how I do it. We, you know, we go big. <laughs> what well, you know what this means for your your Chicago is your uh, bachelor party. Say what now? Chicago bachelor party. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. See, I'm kind of past all that, too. But uh, <laughs> no, y'all ain't I getting insist. me in the <laughs> What did I have there that night? I think I had... I think I had breakfast. I think I had pancakes and eggs and all that kind of stuff. Breakfast for dinner. Hey, I mean... We can, we can make it co-ed. We can make it co-ed. And Lisa come, too. And you all can throw some ones. Are we are we gonna do this? We're gonna throw them a bachelor bachelorette party for Chicago. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. I hope y'all have fun. <laughs> the funny thing is it's for Lisa, you guys. <laughs> Lisa would be the one bouncing off the walls and going absolutely crazy at a, at a something like that. I'd be the old guy sitting in the corner, like, are we all done yet? I, I want to go home. I'm tired. <laughs> he was good after the first dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get up there and start singing Journey on karaoke. Hey, hey, we're going to throw it and you're going to like it. <laughs> I just, Lisa, I got to get permission. Like fun. <laughs> See, Lisa said it sounds like fun. Yeah, she says that until it actually comes time to do it. Then she'd be like, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Y'all do whatever you want. This do. is going to be a day party. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you get more attention that way the earlier you go. I'm already nervous about this. It's going to be a blast. We'll have your favorite shoe, your French toast. <laughs> okay, that'll work. I, all I care about is getting deep dish pizza. That's all, without pineapples on it. That's all I care. <laughs> I'm with that. Can't go to Chicago and not get that. Yeah, the popcorn. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and the Harold's popcorn. No, nah, Garrett's. Garrett's. Harold's, popcorn. Harold's, Harold's is, is the chicken. Yeah. 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 That sounds like a plan. Well, I just wanted to say hi, man. I just wanted to congratulate you. And Thanks, I just man. making sure you weren't too uh, famous to still talk to me. That's all. Oh, come on. Drew will tell you. <laughs> it, it don't work like that with me. Uh, no, I appreciate it. That's very nice of you. I'm glad you did come on because I haven't seen you since 2019. So. I know, man. We survived the pandemic. I just barely. <laughs> glad to be through it, though. I mean... Let things go back to normal now. All right. I'll let you guys have back at it. Appreciate you guys. Right on, Three Stacks. I holla. There it is. You see? That was fun. You enjoyed that, huh? Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> I was nervous. I don't know how I didn't think it was going to be him. Like, it, it didn't occur to me that he would be coming on. But I was like, oh, man, what's about to happen? <laughs> when you watch the replay and look at your eyes, you're going to be like, what did this <laughs> <laughs> I was relieved that it was him, though. I mean, I, you know, I was like, oh, God, what what have I gotten into here? Absolutely. Listen, John, I really appreciate you for coming up, man. This has been great. I I, I, I always see you working hard. Um, you 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 have fun doing what you do. You give some great information. You've got an awesome website with some awesome stuff, man. You've been working your butt off and and it, it pays off and will continue to pay off. I just wanted to have this stream where you could just relax and just answer some questions that's just out of the norm, G. That's, that, that was a lot of fun. I, I would come on streams like this every day if it was going to be like that. I mean, I love talking about fish, but I also love talking about dessert and, <laughs> and movies. <laughs> right on. The busy chat asked the questions. We got them through, man. So let's, 
I want to say thank you to all of my mods who have done their due diligence and hooking it up. Monica Lynn, you're always a champion. Aqua Funk, uh, Jeffrey Watts, everybody, man, and everybody in the chat that jumped in to see this, man. I really appreciate you all. This has been a great stream with one of my favorite people. Actually, he's turned into one of my favorite people. Um, as well as fish tuber so if you if you don't know who he is you should know who he is if you thought you know who he is you know a little bit more about him man so there you go um i'm gonna go ahead and sign off and john any last words nope you know what you did a good job thank you for having me on it was a lot of fun and uh let me know when you want to do it again oh man great you hear that people friend of the channel john hudson <laughs> ag tropicals and I'm going to sign off. The wet stuff is the best stuff. All right. And we are out of here. Peace out, people. Thank you all.